And I know we're going to use this for outtakes, but I am hugging this Aries G1 streamer. All right. Oh, we're rolling, aren't we? When people start out with digital audio and streaming and that kind of thing, what they usually do is buy a pretty good DAC. This is a very good DAC. This is from shit. And then what they do is they get a, a computer like this MacBook Air and they hook it up via USB and then they play their digital audio on the computer. It goes out of the USB socket here, along the cable, into the input on the DAC here. And then the DAC does the digital audio conversion. Now I've got a fancy USB cable. You can ignore that. You can use a normal cable. If you don't believe cables make any difference, it's entirely up to you. All of these things make a difference. The DAC makes a difference. The cable makes a difference. That's a side issue. But the thing I want to talk about today is how this, the digital source device, impacts sound quality. And the big issue with computers like this MacBook Air is that they're not built to sound great. So inside the circuitry is very busy, there's a lot going on, it creates a lot of electrical noise and that can travel down the USB cable and into the DAC and disturb the very sensitive digital circuits inside the DAC. What we tend to hear from computers like this, we don't really get optimal detail retrieval transparency isn't as good as it could be. Music can sound very uptight and very rigid when the transport is noisy. And when I say noisy, I don't mean acoustically noisy, I mean electrically noisy along the cable. This is okay for a starter setup, but the next level involves getting rid of this consumer grade computer and getting a dedicated network streamer. So what we're going to do now is swap out the MacBook Air for something that sounds quite a bit better. So back in 2014, I reviewed this Auralic Ares streamer for six moons. It can stream from other storage points, other like data storage points around the house. That could be a computer, that could be a NAS drive. Um, it can also stream from the internet. So it does Spotify Connect, it has Tidal built in, it has Kobos built in, and it's Rune ready as well, so we can stream from a Rune server. It takes input via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, and we're using USB connection into a DAC. We could also use Toslink, Coax, or AES-EBU if, if your DAC has those kind of connections, but really today I'm kind of, I'm kind of focusing on USB connections. So it really converts Ethernet signals or Wi-Fi signals into digital audio signals ready for our DAC. And because it's designed to be low noise inside, its circuitry is designed not to spill as much noise as the MacBook might, it sounds better, it sounds more alive. Uh, music just has a greater sense of avidity, there's more detail. And there's also that, that very elusive quality in digital audio where things sound more easeful, like you can relax into the music. With this Aurelic Aries that came out a few years ago, came a low noise external power brick. This powers the Aurelic Aries, it's low noise, so there's less noise that goes down this cable into the Aries and then out over its USB output. So keeping noise low from the power supply is fundamental to keeping sound quality high. But there's something coming, something new. This is the new Ares streamer. It's called the G1, um, obviously from Auralic again. So this new Ares sells for $21.99 US dollars. That's 600 US dollars more than the old version. And you can see where the money goes instantly. Look, this is a bigger unit. It's got a fairly um, substantial anodized aluminum chassis. There's power on buttons and control buttons here. But I guess the star of this kind of display show here is the retina screen on the front, which you can see right now is showing some cover artwork, but also gives us access to like the menus inside the machine. Auralic have put two low noise power supplies in here. One for the streaming board, which plays catch on the incoming streams from Rune, from Spotify Connect, from Tidal or from Kobos. And then the other low noise power supply feeds the digital outputs, which we'll look at in a moment. The intent behind having two low noise power supplies in here is to lower the even further the noise that goes out over USB out of the back or the other digital outputs. 
so you can see the original Aries here and its display here and then you can see the, the display on the newer version. It's much more informative, it's bigger, it's nicer, it shows cover art and here we're looking at the menu system inside the device so we can scroll through the options here. Now we can look at the queue, go back to menu, we can look at the library, we'll come to that in a moment. But really the system settings are here. We can see a menu here, we can navigate with these buttons up and down, and the left hand side of the screen shows what that system setting does. So information here and then changing over here, and then we use the M button to go back. And we're going to stream it over here. This configures the streaming portion. We can choose to enable different features, so we can decide whether we want AirPlay on or off, Bluetooth on or off, or Rune Ready on or off, because there's no point having features on that we don't use, because they theoretically maybe generate extra noise inside the device and therefore impact sound quality. Go back again and then we can also configure the processor. Which of these are all the options that you can access through the web interface. So if you'd rather do that you can but you don't have to go to the web interface to configure this device. You can do it from the menu system on here if you want to. The main selling point here is this nice cover art display. I mean people like to look at cover art. I know I do when, I'm, when things are going on because digital audio is so it's invisible. Everything is like ones and zeros you know, whizzing around your network. You don't get to see anything. Not like the vinyl collection I've got over there. Whereas here, cover art display, super awesome. So here we're looking at the back of the new Aries G1 and then the old Aries streamer. And you can just, just really show you that the connectivity is extremely similar. Although the original Aries internalized its Wi-Fi aerials because the new guy has an aluminum chassis, these need to be on the outside here. But I, you can fold them away out of sight. I'm going to talk, be talking a little bit more about Wi-Fi later on because it's actually very important with this device. But here, this is just about DAC connections. You can see that both of these devices enable us to connect to DACs over coax, over AES-EBU, over TOSLINK, uh, and also over USB that I've used here. Then there's the Ethernet port as well. That second USB port there is for connecting a USB hard drive so that we can have the whole thing as a self-contained service streamer. So that we can play music from the contents of the hard drive connected to here. The G1's improvements over the older Aerie streamer aren't just about power supplies, they're also about the streaming platform inside here. This new G1 has twice the processor speed of the old model. It has double the RAM, so it's now using two gig of RAM. And it also has a larger buffer for streaming when using the Lightning DS software. And I think that actually does come into play a little bit because that, for me, streaming Lightning DS with this unit sounds a little bit better than Rune, just a little bit. And I think that's because of the buffer that's going on inside here. The new model, like the old model, does Bluetooth, it does Spotify Connect, it does Apple AirPlay, it does Rune and Lightning DS. And Lightning DS is something I want to show you now. What we're going to do is rather than stream over the network, we're going to connect a hard drive full of music to the back of the G1 and we'll show you how to play music with it. So with Aurelix Lightning DS app, which is available only for iOS, so only if you've got an iPhone or an iPad, you can stream from over the network, but also with a hard drive connected to the back of the unit, which is what we're going to do now. So this first USB socket takes the digital audio out of the G1 and into my key control, which is going to the key speakers behind me. But the second one I'm going to use to connect this hard drive, like that. Hard drive full of tunes. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm telling the Lightning DS app that we've connected a hard drive to the back of the G1 and we need to tell it to scan the contents of that hard drive. It's asking me like, where is your music stored? Is it on a network folder or is it on a USB drive? And it's on a USB drive, so we click on that, next. And it's saying connect your USB drive, which we've already done, so I click next. Is this my drive? Yes it is. And now it's scanning and it did that in about a second. So Lightning DS has scanned a hundred or so albums on my hard drive. It took about a second to do it, literally a second. Lightning fast. Some of my albums clearly lack artwork at the moment. Some of them don't and they're displayed here. I tend to sort by album. This is just a small library of tunes that I've got on a USB drive that's 
directly attached to the G1 over there. And so if I click, I don't know, like David Burns American Utopia, I can see that it's 2496, it's a flak. And because my cover art is displaying here, now playing, and the cover art is now displaying on the G1 just over there. I go back. But this is like the music that I have stored on that hard drive and I can make that, obviously I can just fill that up with tunes. Also inside the Lightning DS app, I have VTuner Radio, so my stations, local stations, browse by genres, go to ambient, go to Germany because that's where I am and I can click any one of these radio stations and play them. And I think this is really where Lightning DS steps ahead of Rune for now is that the, the internet radio support is far better. If I go back to this menu system, you can also see that built into Lightning DS is support for Tidal and for Cobas. I have accounts with both, so I can go to Tidal here. I can scroll through latest albums on Tidal. You can see that it loads pretty damn quickly. And if I go back to the menu here and go to Cobas, and this gives me a sub menu here, of like, like I said, let's say, let's go for Cobas Picks. And again, this loads quite, quite speedily, it's quite nice. Boom. So I can play music from the hard drive, from the internet. So the Aurelic Aries G1 also has Spotify Connect built in. So I click on this and you can see that it's one of my available devices here. The G1 is here. Click on that and I click play. And I'm away with Spotify. Okay, so I'm in Rune now. I can, I mean, Spotify Connect is actually playing on the G1 at the moment. But I can go, oh, okay, I want to move over to Rune. Pick an album, music, choose corners. I've got G1 selected down here as my play zone, so I can either play the Node 2 or the G1. So I've got G1. Click play now. So let's talk about sound quality. And let's talk about comparisons with other gear. Um, I compared the Ares G1 with this, the Blue Sound Node 2. It's almost a quarter of the price of the G1, and it sounds like it as well. I mean, there's no USB on the back of this Blue Sound, so I had to compare these two units using coaxial, sending their digital audio signal into the key remote, which then sends it on to the key three speakers here. The Aurelix sounds considerably more detailed, more alive, um, this sounds a little bit sort of soft and la lacks a certain amount of resolve. And that's what we'd expect from this kind of price difference. So really, the G1 earns its extra cash over the, the Blue Sound device. What people will really want to know is how the new Aries compares with the old Aries. I compare these two over USB, again into the key remote. The G1 offers a little bit more avidity, a little bit more depth and detail. Even more so than that, there is a substantially greater sense of ease coming from the G1 than the older Aries streamer. So again, this new Aries earns its price delta over the older model. And that sense of ease will be especially noticeable to people who really have a sensitivity to that kind of tension with digital audio and that, that nervousness that makes them kind of restless in listening to music. So this is where I think the G1 really kind of steps ahead of the old model is that sort of you can relax into music more easily. It's not a major, major difference. It's not night and day. I really can't stand that phrase, but it's not night and day, but it, there is a difference there. You can be heard. The Zenith Mark II SE from Inuus is my favorite rune ready server and streamer. It has a more organic tone than this Aurelic, and so as well it should. I mean, it's almost three times the price. Aurelic in their Lightning DS setup app recommend that we use Wi-Fi for this streamer, which is very unusual because that goes against conventional audiophile thinking that we should use Ethernet because it's it's not as noisy internally inside the device. But what Shenzhen Wang of Aurelic has told me is that he has really paid a lot of attention to quieten down the Wi-Fi circuit inside this device 
so that it performs better than previously. And I gotta say, like I've, I've tried this device streaming with the, the G1 using Ethernet and using Wi-Fi, and normally I can pick a difference, but with this thing I can't. If you can't run huge lengths of Ethernet all over your house, you know, around the back of systems and things like that, as I sometimes have to do with this Inuus, then the Wi-Fi here is, you know, really puts you at an advantage because you're not tied to your router. And that also is, is one of the key points that um, Aurelic want us to consider is how noisy is our router? And if it's connected via Ethernet to the back here, it's sending noise into this device and then that goes onto our DAC and again, familiar story, reduces our sound quality. So the Aurelic G1 is better than entry level streamers like the Blue Sound and also like the Aries Mini. It's better than the outgoing Aries streamer. It's bigger, it's more solidly built, it has a better Wi-Fi input. We can still stream from USB hard drives attached to the back. We can do Bluetooth, AirPlay, Spotify Connect, Rune, and obviously the Lightning DS that comes with the app. Um, it's, a, it's a terrific all-rounder for the money, and at 2200 bucks, it's not as good as the Inuus, but we wouldn't expect it to be. So this is not the, the best high-end streamer in the universe, but this is a very, very competent product, and for the money, an extremely compelling proposition. I'm an idiot, I tapped the key. <laughs> okay. Sorry, one second.